Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology, and Math Revision Hub. Today, we are doing the Pearson Ed Excel International Level Chemistry, Unit 5 for June 2022. This is the Part 3 video. I'll put the link to the Part 1 and Part 2 video below the description box. Let's begin with the first question. Question 16. The ester ethyl 2 methyl butanoate is found in wild berries such as bilberries. Devise a synthesis to convert butane into ethyl 2 methyl butanoate in four steps. They've given us the skeletal family of butene, and here the skeletal family of ethyl 2 methyl butanoate, which is the ester. So we are combining these into this ester. So they say include the reagent and essential conditions for each step and the name or structure of each of the intermediate compounds. They say details of practical procedures are not required. So beginning with butene, I added HBr to convert it into a halogen or alkane. After introducing the Br, I added KCN because I want to introduce a, another carbon, so I have to carry out a nucleophilic substitution reaction using a cyanide or potassium cyanide in this case. Uh, the conditions for this reaction are in presence of ethanol as a solvent. So this was successful, so we, in, we produced a nitrile. After having a nitrile, I carried out acid hydrolysis because when nitriles are hydrolyzed in the presence of a, an acid, you will produce a carboxylic acid. So in this process, I produced a carboxylic acid. And later on, I carried out esterification. So here, carboxylic acid plus an alcohol, it gave me an ester, which is my final product here. But this occurs in the presence of sulfuric acid. And again, remember they said they wanted us to convert in four steps. So that is how you would produce ethyl 2 methyl butanoate in the four steps required. So this one has to be an arrow in that direction as well. This is the end of question 16. Let's continue to question 17. Question 17. Gilding metal is a type of brass alloy that consists of copper and a small amount of zinc, ranging from 5% to 11% by mass. Copper is very malleable and is hardened by addition of zinc. Gilding metal is much less susceptible to cracking due to corrosion than brasses with a higher percentage of zinc. It has a warm, golden color and can be used to coat materials using electrolysis. It is also used to make test pieces in jewelry manufacture because it has similar properties to silver but is less expensive. The proportions of copper and zinc determine the exact properties of the gilding metal and can be determined by chemical analysis. So part A says, 2.72 grams of a type of brass is dissolved in excess concentrated nitric acid, forming a solution containing both copper 2 and zinc 2 ions. A solution containing hydrogen sulfate ions, which is that, is then added. This is going to be to reduce copper 2 to copper 1. And then they're going to say the addition of ammonium theocyanate, which is that, gives a precipitate of copper 1 theocyanate, which is that. Uh, so the reaction for that is this. And then they say the precipitate of copper 1 theocyanate is collected, dried, and found to have a mass of 4.69 grams. They want to determine whether or not this type of brass is a gilding metal by calculating the percentage by mass of copper. So to calculate the percentage by mass of copper, I went with this reaction first to find the number of moles of copper, 1 theocyanate, which is mass over molar mass. If we refer back to the question, they gave us the mass was 4.69, which is this one here. When we divide by the molar mass, you can calculate this using your periodic table. I get 3.8569 times 10 power negative 2 moles. And then I went back to my reaction. You can see this copper is the same copper here. Yes, in this reaction, we see a ratio of 2 to 2. But here we see a ratio of 1 to 1. And that means this theocyanate reacted with the copper, and this copper is exactly that. So if I've got the moles of this, the mole ratio is going to be 1 to 1, which are exactly the moles of that. So here I said the moles of copper, this is going to be copper 1 plus in here, is going to be the same 3.8569 times 10 power negative 2. And when we do that, these moles are going to be the same moles because if this is exactly that, the mole ratio is going to be 1 to 1. It's 2 to 2, which is the same as 1 to 1. So the moles of this copper are going to be exactly the same as we can see here. Then down here, the mass of copper. Since we have the number of moles and we have the molar mass, mass should be number of moles times molar mass, which gave me 2.4491 grams. That is the mass of copper in the sample of brass. The next part is to determine the percentage by mass of copper, which should be the mass of copper, divided by the total mass of the alloy, which is the brass, times 100, and it gave me 90.04%. Now, if 90.04% is the percentage by mass of copper, the percentage by mass of zinc is going to be 9.96%, which is the difference. 100 minus that gives us that. 
So we go back to our range they gave us. Remember they said 5% to 11% by mass of zinc. That qualifies something being called gilding metal. So in this case, we see this percentage lies within that range. So we can confirm that this is going to be gilding metal. Let us continue. Explain by considering both thermodynamic and kinetic factors why the hydrogen sulfate reduces copper 2 to copper 1, but does not then reduce copper 1 to copper 2. They want you to use the data in the table. Based on the information we have from the question, they say copper 2 is going to be reduced to copper 1. Why? So meaning if copper 2 is reduced to copper 1, the hydrogen sulfate reaction is going to go to the other direction. But when we consider the electrode potentials, we can see calculating the E theta for that cell is going to be negative 0.02 volts. And because this is negative, that reaction should not be feasible, meaning the conversion of copper 2 to copper 1 should not be feasible. However, based on the question they told us that reaction did happen, the only reason for that is maybe that reaction was not carried out at standard conditions, meaning they could have used a higher concentration of copper 2 and that could have led to this reaction being feasible even if it would not be feasible at standard conditions. Now, the next part they say this reaction did not occur. Let's look at the electrode potentials for that. To convert copper 1 to copper, that reaction has a higher positive in comparison to this one, meaning this reaction should be feasible in that direction and that in the other direction. And when we look at the E theta for the cell, it's positive 0.35 volts. That is feasible because it's positive. Now, if this reaction is supposed to be feasible at those conditions, why would it not happen? It means it has a higher activation energy that has to be considered in order for the reaction to be successful. So my answer was, based on the E cell data, copper 2 plus should not be reduced to copper 1 in the presence of the hydrogen sulfate because the E cell is negative 0.02 volts. However, copper 1 should be reduced to copper 2 because the E cell is positive 0.35 volts. Now, then I said, if copper 2 is reduced to copper 1, this means that the conditions were not standard since the E, uh, the e values are very close in magnitude. Also, if copper 1 is not reduced to copper, despite thermodynamic feasibility prediction from the E theater or the E cell, which is positive 0.35 volts, then the reaction is kinetically hindered by a high activation energy. So that is the only way we could answer this question to earn the three marks. Let us continue. The next part says, after the copper 1 theocyanate is precipitated, zinc 2 plus ions remain in solution. A student suggested that these zinc 2 plus ions can be precipitated by adding a large excess of aqueous sodium hydroxide. Comment on this suggestion by describing the reaction that takes place as a large excess of aqueous sodium hydroxide is gradually added. Of course, you know we have zinc ions. If they are left in solution, the precipitation reaction is going to occur when we add sodium hydroxide. And in this case, actually, they added a large excess. So it means we're going to add sodium hydroxide bit by bit, and then we're going to produce a white precipitate. And after that white precipitate, when you add excess sodium hydroxide, the white precipitate is going to dissolve. So I said on addition of little amounts of sodium hydroxide, a white precipitate of zinc, you can see this is going to be tetra aqua dihydroxyl zinc. This is going to be the precipitate it forms. So the reaction for formation of that precipitate is, you can see the hexaqua zinc 2 plus reacts with two hydroxide ions to give us this precipitate here, and then two water molecules are going to be formed. Then I said, however, when excess sodium hydroxide is added, a white precipitate dissolves, and this forms when the dissolution occurs. So you say that, you write that down, you get four marks. Down here they say suggest why gilding metals are less malleable than copper by considering their structure. Malleability is ability for something to be reshaped. So if it cannot be reshaped or hammered into specific shapes, it means addition of the zinc into this copper changes the structure. The added zinc disrupts the arrangement of the copper ions in the layers. So copper and zinc ions have different sizes. So the layers are less likely to slide over each other when a force is applied. Moving on. Here they say zinc and copper are also used in electrochemical cells. They want you to draw a label diagram of the apparatus used to measure the EMF of our cell with copper and zinc electrodes using electrodes under standard conditions. Based on the standard electrode potentials, I know that copper is going to get reduced and zinc is going to get oxidized. And we know the thing that gets oxidized is usually positioned on the left-hand side. So I position the zinc electrode here. The concentration of this solution should be one more per decimeter cube. And this is going to be oxidized producing zinc ions and the electrons are going to move to the other side. 
Also here, I put a copper electrode on the other side because copper is going to be reduced. So copper electrode, and then I put one more per decimeter cube solution of copper to ions. There is a salt bridge that is connecting the two electrolyte solution. And then I put a voltmeter here that is going to measure the difference in potential. So let's continue. Here they say that the Nernst equation describes the relationship between the concentration of metal ions in a half cell and its electrode potential. So this is the equation we have here. They say E, which is capital E, is the electrode potential under non-standard concentrations. Z is the number of positive charges on the metal ion. They say a cell is set up with copper 2 plus ions of concentration 1 more per decimeter cubed and zinc ions of unknown concentration. And they give us the EMF for that cell is positive 1.09. They want you to calculate the concentration of zinc ions. They want you to use the data on page 10 of the data booklet. So from page 10 of the data booklet, I wrote these two reduction potentials. So we can see there is a positive 0 0.34 for the copper 2 copper, as well as negative 0 0.76 volts of zinc 2 and zinc. Looking at these potentials, I saw this should be positioned to the right and that to the left. However, I'm going to use some calculation here to find the value. So E theta for the cell is equal to E right minus E left. Based on this information here, we can see this is more positive, so it should be to the right. I know that this is going to be to the right, the one of copper. However, I do not know the one of zinc because they say it's unknown concentration. So I made this the subject, the one to the left. So making this the subject is going to be the E right minus the E theta for the cell. Remember from the question, they gave us 1.09, which is the E theta for the cell. And I know under standard conditions, the E right, which is going to be that for copper, is 0 0.34. When I calculated, I got negative 0 0.75 volts, and this is the electrode potential, which is capital E for zinc at non-standard conditions or at unknown concentration. So I get that information, and then I have to put everything here. So from my equation given, capital E is equal to E theta, which is going to be that, plus 0 0.0260 divided by the Z natural log of the concentration of the ion. So putting in the information, this is that. This is given from the data booklet or from this information here. It's going to be that. And then this one is known, but remember Z is the charge on the ion. This is zinc 2, its uh, charge is 2 plus. And then natural log concentration of the ion, which I'm going to be looking for. So I made natural log the concentration of zinc 2 ions, the subject, and I got 0 0.76923076.92. Using your calculator, you can be able to calculate the concentration, which is 2.1581 more per decimeter cube. For those who do not do mathematics, if you want to convert, like in this case, if natural log of zinc 2 plus ions equals to that, then you can introduce the exponential. And then on the other side, concentration of zinc should be exponential of that. The concentration of zinc 2 plus is equal to 2.1581 more per decimeter cube. So this brings me to the end of question 17, as well as the end of this paper. Thank you for being with us. Please do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.